Hi everyone! Welcome back to my channel Sharon Cullen Art and to my last video of 2020. At least I believe it's my last video of 2020. Let me put it this way. It's my last art vlog of 2020 where I just sit and shoot the breeze with you all. Uh, yeah, so we've got this going on outside. It is snowing. It's hard to see the snow through the screens, but it is snowing. And unfortunately, it's supposed to turn over to rain, um, which makes me kind of sad, but also makes me kind of happy because there's a couple things. Um, we had our landscapers finally get to us with a bid. Um, and some 2D plans that they had uh, drawn up for us for our landscaping around our home. We need to get the sprinkler system in. We need to get grass put down. We're going to be building a deck on the front of the house and we need them to do the landscaping around the front and side of the house, especially over here by the walkout. Now, as you remember, let me turn the camera around again. And I will walk you over here in my messy studio. There's a lot of work going on here. Um, as you remember, last summer, the excavator put these walls in. These are temporary walls. They were to help prevent erosion from all the topsoil that was being put in. So we're going to be putting our hot tub over at this wall over here probably be out as far as we can put it, but our slab ended too early. I told Pat I wanted it taken right to the edge, but he didn't do it that way. So, uh, again, that was an issue. So we're going to have to have the hot tub as far over as we can get it where it's still sitting on the slab. But sometimes the base is in a little bit narrower than the outside edge or or lining or shell around a hot tub. So I don't mind if that's hanging over the edge, but we'll just have to see how it goes. But anyway, they're going to be putting in rock ledges there. For Christmas, Pat and I were going to get ourselves a hot tub. And we said that we weren't gonna buy each other any other gifts because we had this hot tub coming, right? Hang on, I gotta hang you guys back up here. Ugh, without disconnecting. There, I think we're okay. Um, so, uh, he wanted to get the hot tub along with me. He knew how bad I wanted it um, for my health reasons, for my chronic pain. I used to always be in my hot tub. As you guys probably remember, those of you who follow me on Instagram for years had used to see me put posts up while I was sitting in the hot tub, uh, like, the slow motion of the squirrel making the giant leap over to our bird feeder when we lived in Shelby. We didn't get the hot tub because we wanted to finish everything we needed. The concrete poured, we needed this done, we needed that done. Well now these guys have come with the 2D plans and they're going to be putting in a beautiful rock ledge for us. I'm not sure if it's going to be ledge stone. I'd rather have boulders, but they do take up more space and boulders are very expensive which is silly here by Lake Huron, but whatever. So uh, anyway, we can't get our hot tub until they put the rock ledge in. So we're like, well, when are you gonna put the rock ledge in? They come back to work January 4th. They said, as long as there's no snow on the ground, then they can keep working. So what does it do? It snows, although it is supposed to get up to 35 today. And I think we're supposed to get some rain this afternoon. So if we get rain this afternoon, it will melt the snow, which bums me out. I'd really like to have some snow for right now. We haven't had much of it at all here. Um, all of Michigan, well, the west side of the state always gets more snow because Lake Michigan um, is on the west side and winds usually blow from the west. So they get a lot more lake effect snow than we do. We get it when it blows from the north. So anyhow, blah, blah, blah. We can't get our hot tub until this wall gets done, or we can get the hot tub, delay them till spring, and then hopefully get on the list and not have to wait again, if you know what I mean. 
and then we have to drain the hot tub and move the hot tub in order for them to get their equipment in to put their ledges up. So we're hopefully going to get the, the ledges done next week sometime. And then Pat and I can go shopping for a hot tub. But if you remember rightly, I was all concerned over his Christmas present. And I bought those panels. And they were the wrong size. So I bought bigger panels. And they were the correct size. But I ran out of time and had an injury to my back. So I have been down and out for quite a while. And I do good for a little bit. And then all of a sudden all hell breaks loose again. So I wonder if I have to bleep that out because it's a bad word or something. Actually, that's a place, so it shouldn't be a bad word. But anyhow, uh, we do have a city in Michigan called Health, so um, I'm getting sidetracked. <laughs> so anyway, we said we're not going to do presents because we're going to get a hot tub, right? So I bought him just this t-shirt that said thumbs up. It was a picture of Michigan. Um, and we are right here in the tip of the lower peninsula. We have the lower peninsula and then the upper peninsula that goes like this. And this comes up, sort of. And that is what Michigan looks like, our state. So, anyway, we live here. And so I found him this, this place on awesomemichigan.com or Michigan Awesome. And it was a shirt that said thumbs up. And I thought, how clever. So I got him this t-shirt and it was on sale. I got it really cheap. I thought, well, that's a nice cheap gift. And if I get his painting done, then so, you know, so be it. And if I don't, then I'll work on it as time allows and I'll get it done for him. And we open our presents Christmas morning. I got my family tree from Monica and Jason, which was really nice. And that was my gift. And I thought it was wonderful. And it was fine. I have no need for anything. You guys know how I buy stuff for myself. I have no need for anything. But what does he do? He goes out and buys me a flippin' diamond necklace. This is what he does to me, you guys. He bought me this pretty diamond necklace and I absolutely love it. And the diamond moves. So it always sparkles. It's on hinges. So when it tilts, it turns sideways. And every time you move, the the diamond moves. So the facets are always catching the light. And it's really pretty. I love it. And it's like a double infinity thing. The the um thing here is double infinity. So I thought it was beautiful. It wasn't super expensive, he said. I don't know what that means. It's all relative to him. It depends on what he's buying and as long as he's buying it, you know. So anyway, he gets me this and I felt so guilty. I didn't even know I had it. Santa filled the stockings the night before. I got to cut that out. So Santa had filled the stockings as he always does. And this year must have been a little tight for him or maybe we weren't so good because it was just candy and nothing else and um then pat had gone and stuck this gift in my stocking well i never went to my stocking well time passed and it was driving him freaking batshit it was driving him crazy so um he finally pulled it out and he said, Santa left this in your stocking and, and he gave it to me and I was shocked. I'm like, we said we weren't going to buy anything expensive for each other. Oh, it wasn't expensive. I'm like, okay, well, is it CZ's and Sterling Silver? Because then maybe it wasn't expensive. But even Sterling Silver isn't cheap anymore. So I was not happy that he did that to me. He always does that to me and then I'm left hanging out to dry and doing the bad gift thing. So... Anyway, that was Christmas, and my family tree goes back to the 12th century in Scotland, which was absolutely amazing. And I've told you all before, and for those of you who are new to the channel, um, my family was royalty. They lived uh, in the Bagnagown Castle, Castle, the Bagnagown Castle in Scotland, and one of my ancestors married the um, king of Scotland. I forget what his name was. Was it William Henry? Uh, I don't know what his name was. I can't remember. 
off the top of my head. I should have brought the family tree out here. But anyway, he uh, married one of my ancestors. Her name was Catherine, and she became queen. So um, it was a second marriage for him. His first wife had died. I don't know if she died in childbirth or what. But uh, So I'm re-recording that because uh, it wasn't coming out right. So anyway... My ancestor was in the Jacobite uprising over in Scotland, and he was in the Ross clan, my maiden name Ross, and he was fighting in the war. And the Jacobites really lost. A lot of clans were killed, and it was just it was a bloodbath. They didn't have a chance. They didn't even have guns. All they had were their their swords or whatever, and knives and stuff like that, and the other side, the British, had guns, so there was no chance, and cannons and stuff. It was horrible. So anyway, um, since my ancestor was queen, she found out about it and sent somebody to kidnap him, and he was kidnapped the night before the uprising. And so he was taken into custody and the police kept him in prison for two years. Normally they would kill anybody in the clan. So the British kept him in custody and then eventually in the 1500s sent him over to the United States. Well, it wasn't the United States. Sent him over to North America in the 1500s to start colonizing the Americas. So he was sent to Pennsylvania, which obviously wasn't Pennsylvania yet, but he was sent there, and um, that's how my clan or my family ended up in the United States. He was banned from ever returning to Scotland, so he made his life here he, after slavery. I don't know if he was a slave the whole time or if they let him go after the colonies were done or what, but um, he was a slave before slaves were even brought over to our country. So... Uh, when I think about, now I'll go on with the rest of the story that I pre-recorded. And I had said in a previous video, this whole thing about uh, reparations for slaves, I think is a little bit ridiculous because there aren't any slaves ar uh, alive anymore in our country, except for people who've been sex trafficked, and those people are slaves. But um, anyway, when certain ethnic groups go on and on about slavery, I get a little bit upset because somehow they think they're special and I think we're all special and I don't have any need for a reparation because I came from slavery. There are a lot of white people here who ended up in this country due to slavery. I love this country. I love this country. I wouldn't live anywhere else. Um, at least not right now. If things keep getting worse, I might. But <laughs> who knows how that's going to go. But anyway, on to different topics. So I got myself something in the mail. And you wouldn't believe this. Our UPS driver apparently thought my dumpster out at the end of the road was a UPS drop box. So he threw my package in the dumpster. And uh, I was like looking all over for my... Uh, coffee syrup. I use those skinny syrups, the zero calorie syrups that go in your coffee. And I had run out of my favorite salted caramel one. So I've been using caramel pecan and it said my girlfriend here in the little box named A-L-E-X-A. -E I can't say her name or she'll come on. Um, which she will anytime now. Oh no. She's going to tell me I need to call my dad in about seven minutes, so you'll hear her. But anyway, I um, was looking all over for the package. Pat went to take the garbage out on his way to physical therapy today, and my box is sitting out there in the garbage. And it's a good thing our garbage is collected on Monday because today is Wednesday, and it was sitting in the bin, so he found it. But I ordered some new gouache. This one is from... It's a uh, permanent, it's from Windsor and Newton, and it has a permanence rating of A, which is good. Um, and it's Perlene Violet. And I thought I would check it out, and I'll show it to you on paper. But I wanted to uh, get this 
and see what it was like. It's kind of a brownish maroon. I thought it might be nice for trees. Yeah, it's a very purpley brown kind of a color. So we're going to check that out. This pretty perylene violet that I got turned on to. I believe it was Sarah Burns who turned me on to this color. And I thought, oh, that's really pretty. Oh, look at that color. Oh, is that not gorgeous? Oh my gosh, I'm in love. I was going to use watercolor today, but I might have to paint with this today. Oh, is that beautiful? Oh my goodness, I love it. I love it, I love it. Caroline Violet, that is. And that is gouache. I bet I could get it in watercolor too, but... Oh, is that pretty? It is so pretty. And I thought I might do some watercolor videos coming up very soon. So um, I'll be starting those. Now I wanted to talk to you guys about all the changes coming up. Oh, and my ladder. You can see how it's coming along there. Those are the steps going up. We have to stain them. They're going to be stained the color of the floor. Probably like a walnut color right now. Those are just sitting there for me to try the steps out because they're very close together. I wanted a low rise because as I get older, it's going to be harder and harder for me to climb that steep climb. I have a handrail on the side, but unfortunately, as you move it over, it hits the ceiling. So he's got to cut it down. Then I'm going to have a, a handicap handle put up here on this wall right over here so that I can pull myself up and have something to hold on to as I find my steps, my footing to come down. But he needs to also get another rail. He gets this short little rail. Look at that rail going across. It doesn't even go over far enough for me to get up into the hole. I want it to come way over to here. I would have liked it to run all the way across so that I have the option to move my ladder one way or the other. So anyway, I had to stop that real quick because the guy who's making this ladder was coming over to do a measurement for the new railing and everything. So... Anyhow, he's going to finish working on all that, and my steps will go up on the ladder. You saw them sitting there before. They'll go, Pat's going to be putting those on. we got to stain them and everything. And then uh, I'll be all set to be able to go up and down to the loft, which will be nice. I want to get a little chair up there so that I can sit up there when I'm going through my knitting books and that kind of thing and be able to choose what I want to do. Are you crying because I'm talking to my YouTube peeps? You just need to be making noise. Can you hear them? If any of you watched that Instagram video that I put up last night, uh, it's on IGTV on my channel. Diesel, stop or you're going outside. He cried through the whole thing because there were people walking by our, our car and everything. And, and um, we kept moving up closer and closer we were way at the end and after my video there was so much more that happened like there were these three giant light bulbs that were on top of the house and they started singing um that song um do you want to build a snowman that one um from frozen and the little lights going do you want to build a snowman? It was so cute. And they'd all start singing and, and their heads going and their mouths going, oh, when they'd hold a note, it would go like round. It was so funny. And then every time they said snowman, all these snowmen with snowmen would light up. It was like, like 30 of them going all the way across the property. And then when we finally got close enough to drive by the merry, the merry-go-round and the Ferris wheel, the Ferris wheel was filled with bears. There were like polar bears, brown bears, black bears, just going around on the Ferris wheel. They were all like stuffed animals and stuff. It was really cool. But we had a great time seeing that. We stayed for probably, I don't know, half a dozen songs. We were there for probably a half hour. Every song was different. And every bit of the light show was, was part of the music. And like there was one they were taught, singing, it looked like a champagne bottle. It came up, it, had, it was blue, and then all of a sudden the top like shot up 
and then you see these white lights come down like like champagne bubbling over the battle. It was so cool, you guys. There were so many things. The geniusness that went into this. This has been going on for 39 years. Hi, do you wanna come sit? Do you wanna come see me? Do you wanna say hi to the peoples? Do you? I don't have anything over here. Do you wanna go outside with daddy? You probably need your sweater on. Do you want me to get your sweater? Your wagon, your tail. He's got a Christmas sweater, you guys. I will show it to you. Right here. All of my stuff is all over the place because they've been working and I'm just leaving it. This is his Christmas sweater. So I'm going to put your Christmas sweater on and then you can go out to play. But we got to show everybody how pretty you look with your Christmas sweater on, okay? Here. Let me show you guys what he looks like. Here he is in his pretty Christmas sweater. You want to go outside with Daddy? You look so pretty. He's got another one that says it's blue and white and it's striped and it says dog, hashtag dog on the back. Then he's got a coat for the real cold days. See ya. Have fun. Yeah, our snow's going to be melting. The plow just came through. I couldn't believe it. When I lived in the city, it would be days, sometimes weeks, before the plow would come in. And... Now, this one's here the same day it's snowing. There goes another one right down the street. And I don't know if you can hear my music, but yes, I'm still playing Christmas music. It's Christmas until January 10th this year. So um, actually the 6th is officially when it ends, the 12th day. Oh, channel. I had posted some stuff. Oops, I got you guys all off. Let me bring you back down to earth here. Oh, that's pretty with that elk. Is that an elk? Yeah, I thought it was a moose there for a minute. I had posted on Instagram that there were changes coming up on my channel. I'm doing a lot of things, and I'm going to be focusing more on my website, getting my paintings loaded to my website for sale, um, and I need to do more of them. I mean, I work in my sketchbooks, but I don't. I don't sell those. I have sold a couple of them because people begged me to, but um, for the most part, I I would rather just do a painting. I am going to be getting my website up and running. Uh, I had finally made a decision on who I wanted to go through for my website, and I don't want to spend a lot of money, so um, I just want a place where I can sell my paintings because quite often, especially more recently, I've been getting more and more people asking me where they can buy my artwork. I have done commissioned artwork before as well. Uh, some of you have contacted me and said that you'd like to buy the painting that I just did on a video or or you asked me if I would paint something certain, you know, something special for you. So I've done that and um, I also do pet portraits and stuff like that. So I wanted to post a place to put all that and so I'm opening a website so that it's easier for people to go ahead and buy some of my artwork. The other thing that I'm doing is I'm finally, finally, finally going to get and or I've already done it. I've got an Amazon affiliate link for my favorite things that I use in my studio that I have bought through Amazon. I do have a lot of favorite things that you can't get on Amazon though. So those things I will still have to post and give credit to uh, the people that I have gotten them from. Oh, you're back already? My goodness. Come on, Mr. Christmas boy. You're so cute in your sweater with your Mr. Bill. Um, so I'm going to be doing my uh, affiliate link. I'm slowly filling up things that I find. Um, I am pulling, putting things on. Like some people ask me about this. And this is one of my studio pieces that I actually absolutely love. It's a pencil or pen holder for stores to use for selling items. They have different ones now. This is a 12... 12 one and you can hold I put my brushes in there to dry which is so convenient so whenever they're wet and I'm painting I just drop them in like this and I can hold them there and it's wide enough that my brushes aren't falling out so I mean I can keep them on there overnight and then the next day I just 
put them back in my little brush holder thing. And then things like this. I got a lot of comments. Where'd you get that brush holder? This was actually a makeup brush holder. It's some sort of vintage looking holder. And I thought that would be perfect for putting brushes in. And I love it. This one sits on my table so that I have the brushes that I use the most over there. And then sometimes I get things about my Lazy Susan thing and that I got at a Michael. So I don't know. I think you can still get them on Amazon. But so many things. It's going to take me a long while to get everything on there. And then there's some things like some of my favorite pens that I absolutely love that I can't even find it anymore. So I'd have to go to send you to Jet Pens in order to get it. So, um, <coughs> or some other pen store, whatever. But, uh, and then I have other ones like this that I used to use for propping my pencils and pens in. But I had a bigger table at the time, so I'm trying to clear stuff off my table. And uh, so anyway, I'm using, I'm getting the affiliate link up and running. And it is open now, so you can find me, Sharon Cullen Art, over there on, on the uh, Amazon store. But uh, I'll be posting it to, I'll post it the end of each video are in my description box so that you guys can find it you know down where I put follow me on Instagram and all that stuff I'll put my affiliate store in there I saw my dad yesterday it was kind of sad I spent a half hour with him Pat spent about 50 minutes with him and um, which was fine because my dad would rather talk to the guys than his daughters anyway so um, he just listens to me and he doesn't offer up a whole heck of a lot. But he uh, didn't look great and it's bothering me. As a nurse, I know when an elderly person starts to lose weight and starts to have less interest in food and eating, their body is slowing down and it's a sign that they're not going to be around much longer. My father is 93. I really don't want him to live to 100 for his own sake. But for my sake, I would love it because we had a very strained relationship for many years. And it wasn't until I got to be about 40 years old that I started to really work on that relationship and repair it. Um, he was an alcoholic, or he's an alcoholic. He does not drink anymore. He quit drinking probably 40 years ago. He went to rehab, never looked back, and never had another drop of alcohol uh, except he would have a little bit of wine sometimes with dinner, but then he started having wine every night with dinner, and he was buying wine at the store, and we said, you know, you got to stop that. A little wine every night with dinner is fine for somebody who's not an alcoholic, but you're starting to drink more. And uh, he realized it, so he stopped it, and he had no problem stopping it. But uh, if it was beer, he said he wouldn't have been able to stop. So... Um, I applaud him for that, but it was a we had a very strained relationship because of uh, how I was treated as a child. My mother was a saint, but my father scared the living crap out of me, and um, I grew up that way. So it caused a lot of problems for me. Caused a lot of problems in relationships. I still struggle with trust issues, especially with men, um, and like right now with what's going on with my son. Uh, now my trust is broken with him. So repairing that relationship is going to be really hard for me. Of course, I'd, I want him back, and I want him here with open arms, but uh, like the prodigal son returning, you know. But uh, that hasn't happened yet, and the longer it doesn't happen, the harder it is for me. Never heard from him for Christmas. I tried several times, he would not respond. But then on Christmas evening, as we were sitting down to dinner, the four of us, my son and his girlfriend and my husband and I, um, Pat received a text from my son wishing him a Merry Christmas. And that was it, and that he loved him, I guess. And, and that was it, but nothing for my son, his twin brother, or me. So it's been very hurtful. He picks and chooses who he's willing to speak with, and um, he doesn't want anything to do with me. So it's hard. It's really hard. But that breaks trust. It's hard. I, I'm probably going to cut all this out. But anyway, what else? Oh, my my videos. Uh, 
I know like Mary Tripp Hobby was very concerned that um, I was going to stop doing videos. I have no intention of stopping my YouTube videos. Those are going to continue. I love doing the YouTube videos for you guys. Um, I am, however, going to do a little bit less of the beginner stuff and more of my demos, uh, just me painting, and you can watch. A lot of people said they just like to watch me paint, and I might do that without voiceover. With voiceover, it'll change. Um, I will do some beginner videos just so that you beginners have something else to, to work from. And I do like to explain some of the things I'm doing so that you guys can continue to learn. Also, I received a very nice gift over Christmas. You know who you are. Uh, I don't know that he wants to be named here. He did not want me to read his letter, uh, which I wouldn't. I wouldn't read a letter. If something's personal, I don't, I don't really read it, but I'm online to everybody. But I do appreciate if you don't want it read, just put a little note on there. Don't read this online, and I won't. Um, but I... Uh, got it and it was so nice of him and I appreciate it but he had a couple questions one of the questions was how to rip or how to remove tape from the corners of your painting so I'm going to turn the camera around and show you how I do that and the other question was um, it was something I've gone over before I need to pause it and think I remember it was about brushes, using brushes for different mediums. He said that he had used his watercolor brushes for acrylic, and I just cringed. Do not cross over your watercolor brushes to acrylic or oil or anything like that. Because the mediums are so different, and you always will get uh, paint trapped up inside those bristles you do not want to use them back on your watercolor it's going to change the texture of your watercolor over time so keep watercolor brushes for watercolor and then buy other brushes for your acrylic you can use cheap brushes for acrylic it doesn't matter they get ruined fairly easily over time so um yeah just use those and uh, get some other ones for your acrylic painting and that should be good um, so those were the two questions he had. You do not want to share brushes between mediums. It's one thing. You can use your watercolor brushes for gouache. I do not. And the reason that I do not is because, first of all, I prefer rounds for watercolor and flats for gouache a lot more. Don't ask me why. I'm the same with oil paint. I don't use rounds unless I'm doing finishing work. Um, the second thing is, is I like to use stiffer brushes for gouache because it's easier to move the paint around. And also my brushes for watercolor hold so much water that it's easy to lose control of your gouache when you have too much water in your brush when you're painting with gouache. So I use synthetics for gouache and I use animal hair for watercolor for the most part. I will use some synthetics, but for the most part I use uh, Kalinsky Sable or Squirrel Rizlon. I use the silver black velvet brushes like these, or I will use my um, my other brushes like, that's uh, Rosemary and Company. This one looks like Da Vinci. I use the Da Vinci Maestro brushes, and I use the long tapered rounds. Um, and this one doesn't say long tapered, but I think they are long tapered rounds. So you get a, a bigger point. Yeah, this is a long tapered round. You see, I get a finer point with that. And I can do a whole painting with this one number eight round brush for very easily. But then I also will use these. This is a script liner, but it's a big one. I think it's a one. Oh no, it's a six script. Probably got that so that I could do branches and that's what that one looks like so these are my two favorite types of brushes uh da vinci maestros and silver black velvets so those are what i use mostly for watercolor i'll use some rosemary and company some blick brushes and that kind of thing but those are it for me and um then for the gouache i will use the other uh 
brushes, the cheap ones. Like I use those Transin brushes and stuff like that. And I have been using recently, more recently, these Chinese brushes. And I'm enjoying painting with those as well. So, um, yeah. So I think that's pretty much it. Um, as far as changes go to the channel, basically my channel, I'm going to be working a lot more on my art. So those are not going to be tutorials where I want you copying my work. Um, usually I will put in the title, uh, copyright, do not copy or whatever. This is a demo only. Or when I put demo, that's just so that you can see me painting my work, but it's not meant to really be copied. I mean, I know I, I really can't stop you, but when I'm selling work, I want, I want a buyer to know that that's the only painting that is like that. Now, granted, if you painted something that I've painted, your style is going to show and stylistically it would be different. But for the most part, um, when I'm painting things like that and selling them, I want to make sure that that person knows that they're getting an original and there aren't any others out there like it. So um, that's why I say that they're not tutorials. I will always put tutorial in the title when it's a tutorial that you can copy my work on and most of it you can but I'm planning on doing more of that although I have had a several people copying some of my animals like I did these giraffes several years ago I'll try to put a um, picture up for you and those were done for my nieces as Christmas gifts for their new babies nurseries one of them asked for a giraffe painting and she loved this one with the funny face. And then my other niece contacted me and said, oh, can you do one for me too? And I said, sure. And she wanted a mom and a baby. So um, I did the other one for her and it worked out perfectly. And then I did a third one for my nephew and his baby. And then when my other nephew and his wife had their first child, I did a picture of them uh, in Iceland because they found out she was pregnant on the trip to Iceland or I forget I forget how it happened but anyway Iceland was a trip to remember so I did that beautiful that picture of um, I forget the name of the place very very popular I put a picture of the painting up in here whatever so you can see it and they I gave that to them at their baby shower so those kinds of paintings I really don't want copied but the giraffes had been copied. So I had to put on their copyright, please do not copy these. These were done for uh, commission. So uh, people would stop copying them. So those are going to be the changes. I'm still going to do my vlogs and I'll probably do one a week or maybe one every other week. It just depends on how busy I am. I'm going to get my website done and when that's done and I launch it, you guys will be the first to know or mm, Instagram people will be the first to know and as far as the giveaway went for the gouache um, Two of you had problems with your discount codes. So I gave your addresses directly to um, the People that were going to mail you out the gouache uh, The G's finest people and the other ones ordered theirs online without any problem, but um those people, I've been getting a lot of people saying, oh, add me to your giveaway. That giveaway is done and over with. Uh, I had to redraw three of the names and I had an extra one. So there were four more giveaways that I did live um, over on Instagram. So if you're not on Instagram, I advise you to get on Instagram. Even if you're not going to post anything, just get your name on Instagram so that you can follow me. And then you can see what's going on and you can message me directly there. Uh, I do not use Facebook much. Um, I will use it for family and close friends. But some of you who have been following me for years over there are still following me. But I'm rarely on Facebook. Uh, and I do use Facebook Messenger. So if you need to get in touch with me that way you can. But you're going to miss a lot uh, of things that are going on that I do over on Instagram little videos, little updates, what the next video is going to be, um, those kinds of things, and the extra giveaways. I really loved the way those giveaways worked, and I may be doing them that way in the future and not using YouTube at all.
because I don't get the responses that I need. I get these one-time watchers that join and then they don't come back to see if they've won. So I'd rather do these giveaways live on a live feed and then those of you who want to be involved in it just get on and I draw the names right there for you and the winners are done and it's over with immediately. It's a lot less work for me. So get over on Instagram and follow me at Sharon Cullen Art and then you will be up to speed on everything that's going on. And uh, I believe that's all that I wanted to tell you guys right now. And uh, have a great day. Have a very, very happy and safe new year. And uh, I hope that next year is better, but I don't think it's going to be. I think it's going to be a lot more of the same. This is going to be a couple of years worth of crap. And I believe uh, things are going to get worse in other ways. That is my belief. And um, for those of you who are Christian and following what's been going on with the Great Reset and with the... Um, the one world religion thing that's being pushed by the Pope who some people think is the false prophet and all sorts of stuff. I don't know what's happening, but I do know that things are going downhill fast and it is very scary. So um, just stay positive, people, and don't think I'm a nutcase or conspir conspiracy theorist. This has all been predicted by many people over hundreds and thousands of years before me and even in the Bible and it is now happening and everything's coming to fruition so um, I see it going downhill fast and it's very scary the the religious persecution that's going on I think is one big cue that we are really in these end times and those of you who aren't religious may want to drop out right here and just go away you don't need to leave me nasty comments, but um, those of you who are Christian know exactly what I'm talking about. And I have been persecuted many times, online and in person, and I have been afraid to talk about my religion sometimes because of the persecution, and it's going to get worse. And I believe that our government is going to begin controlling, controlling churches uh, Catholics are very hated and I am Catholic and um, this one world church thing is a bunch of hooey it's ridiculous that our Pope thinks that that is a good thing Jesus did not teach that and the Pope also said a couple of years back that we should not evangelize what is that about we should not evangelize maybe I should do this in a separate video maybe I will um, I think I will do this in a separate video and just cut all this out. So that is it for today, you guys. Um, I've got a bottle here that I'm just going to pretend to do a toast with. And, uh, I got my little Christmas lights in here. So, um, here's to next year being a better year for our painting that will all grow in our painting and that we will be disciplined with our practice and that Sharon will get out and do more plein air painting and um, get more videos up for you guys. And anyway, have a happy, happy, safe new year. Don't drink too much because you're going to feel bad the next day and then you won't be able to paint. And I will see you all next year. So in the meantime, be courageous. Paint with wild abandon, and most of all, be kind to each other. Take care. God bless you. See you in 2021. Bye now.